Uh, following uh, last week's disgraceful display from Mr Ian Hislop, the BBC guidelines have assisted that he has to have a vicar sitting next to him tonight. <laughs> 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 Lest he be tainted <laughs> to befoul the air. Watch <laughs> 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 Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Mel Gedroich and in the news this week... History is made in St Ives as a seven-year-old becomes the first person in Cornwall to get a decent mobile phone signal. <laughs> <laughs> as their election battle bus arrives in Leicester, UKIP party workers prepare to meet people from all ethnic backgrounds. <laughs> At the end of a chartered flight to Stansted, the pilot starts to regret letting James Corden sit in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a comedian who, as a child in Newcastle, used to unicycle to school. Well, that's the North East for you. Somebody nicks your front wheel, what else can you do? <laughs> Please welcome Ross Noble. And with Ian tonight, whilst one of the communards continued to trawl the gay bars dressing outrageously and playing synth pop, the other left to become a vicar. And they've been reunited this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome. <laughs> Please welcome the Reverend Richard Coles. <laughs> And we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Richard, take a little look at this. Yes, you, Kim. <laughs> uh, that's Ken Clark. Clash yeah. of the Titans. Well, there's that nice man with the Poundland umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> He's arriving at Transylvania to meet his slate of vetted <laughs> candidates. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you may laugh, but uh, by the time this goes out, mm. um, Nigel Farage will be Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a bloody cheek calling himself Farage, because yeah. that's French. Yeah. He, should be, he should be called Forage. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, the problem. Kenneth Clark. Um, the Tories are incredibly scared that UKIP yes. would take all their seats. So Kenneth Clown... Kenneth Clown! Clown. <laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't Jeremy Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're looking for you to raise the tone this week. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say Kenneth Clark. Yes, yes. He just he described UKIP as clowns. Yes, he did. Everyone's focused on them, but it may be that other things happened. There yeah. were some other parties. Apparently, the Labour Party was standing in, in some seats. I've heard yes, of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how well they've done. There was a very interesting slate of candidates. You know, so there was the chap, the UKIP uh, guy, uh, I think he was in Gloucestershire, who helpfully volunteered this week that physical exercise prevents homosexuality. <laughs> well, he run away from them. Well, he hasn't been in the gym in Soho for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shut up now, shall I? No, you can't. No. <laughs> no, more about those gay bars in Soho. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point of getting a vicar on. <laughs> Yeah. First-hand knowledge. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> just remind me, I did want to have a very tricky encounter. There's um, a beach in Norfolk, North Norfolk, Hokan Beach, which is favoured by naturists. Mm. And uh, in a previous existence, I thought it might be quite fun to try that, and unfortunately bumped into my archdeacon. <laughs> <laughs> was he arch? <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was talk that uh, UKIP were going to have to buy in policies. Did you say this? Yeah. Mm. Buy in policies uh, from a right wing think tank. That's brilliant, the idea of just some bloke in a pub just going, I've oh, got your uh, foreign policy there, mate. <laughs> well, uh, more in the, uh... So I'm going to start my own right wing think tank. My first one, right? Gay marriage is allowed, right? But the honeymoon has to be you go and destroy a wind farm. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Be careful, you're going to get in. Oh, no, <laughs> People have been voting, so let's hear from one UKIP supporter. And who do you normally vote for? UKIP. <laughs> I did last time as well, yeah. Before that? <laughs> uh, I don't think I voted before that, to be honest. Really? So UKIP's made you into a voter? Uh, yeah, really, I suppose, yeah, yeah. But do you, do you think they're a serious contender to become the government of this country? No, not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> did Nigel Forage hit back? Oh, he said the Tories were trying to smear them and um, there may be some lunatics in their party but, you know, they've only just started, they can't spot all of them. They, <laughs> they don't have the resources to, to find men doing that on Facebook. Um, <laughs> Shall we have a look at can that? Can we have this a look is, at that picture? This is a photo that Alex Wood, who's the candidate for Blackmore Vale in Somerset, mm -hmm. put up on his own Facebook page. Here he is. Yes. They said, that shows you're a fascist and he said, no, I was... This is what he said. He said, I was trying to stop someone taking a picture of me because I was about to eat the plant. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely right, Ian. It's a Nazi salute, isn't it? <laughs> and, he, and he also Although... turned and said, uh, what, what would I look like with a moustache? Do you think, <laughs> and, hey, no, get away. <laughs> no, come on. How did UKIP's committee chairman in Somerset, Dorothy Baker, react to all of this? Are we being paid by UKIP? <laughs> <laughs> well, this should be renamed. Have I got local news for you? <laughs> <laughs> a Sainsbury's in the Loughborough area. <laughs> <laughs> Planning content has been given. We had a, I was voted, as, and we had a sort of... There was a big political debate, so candidates from the Tories, Labour and UKIP at the infant school in my parish today. Oh. And we started having political debate, but then it got subsumed into a discussion about Mr and Mrs Paris's wisteria. Oh. <laughs> Was yeah. the UKIP guy going, wisteria, that'll grow, ooh, at least. Yes! <laughs> 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 oh, I've done it again! <laughs> <laughs> But Dorothy Baker said mm. you could be flippant and say there's no such thing as bad publicity, or you could be Dorothy Baker and talk bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> if all this wasn't enough of an indication of uh, Nigel Farage's lack of judgement, uh, he was photographed with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can feel the circulation dropping. <laughs> Yours or the magazine? <laughs> According to the Times, what's mm. missing from the UKIP party on a massive Ooh, scale? They're not getting enough publicity on the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a humorous comical mascot? <laughs> what mm. would it be? What would they have? Um, Some bulldog sort of... with a pint. Yeah, and a Romanian in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a Churchill ad you don't want to see. <laughs> Are you going home? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, apparently, it's money. They need to find £120 billion to fund the pledges in their election manifesto, oh, which yes. include phasing out national insurance contributions, abolishing inheritance tax, having a 25% flat rate of tax, increasing defence spending by 40%, <laughs> uh, and top of the agenda, bringing back smoking mm. in pubs. <laughs> you can see why people vote for them. <laughs> <laughs> but you had Tory ministers literally saying, I've looked at your proposals and the country cannot afford this, instead of saying, they're not going to get in, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if they've got in, I'll feel very silly. <laughs> That would be the least of our problems. <laughs> <laughs> what has Ed Miliband done uh, ten times this week? Uh, he keeps telling people he's a leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> Is it avoiding a question? Yes, did you Actually, just look at the cards? Yes. Ross, you did no, slightly. I did. I could, look, one, I can't see it from there. Okay. Two, I can't read. OK. <laughs> <laughs> He's avoided answering a question on Radio mm. 4's The World at One about Labour's uh, uh, spending plans. Mm. And he's also been out on the streets to do Q&A sessions while standing on a pallet. So let's see if he impressed voters in Crawley. He wants to be Prime Minister. Oh, does he? Of Crawley? No, no, Prime Minister of the country. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she, she did say <laughs> Prime Minister of Crawley. <laughs> This is Thursday's local elections. UKIP suspended their candidate, Alex Wood, who was pictured making a Nazi salute. Mr Wood tried to explain away the photo, saying, my left arm is extended to take the camera off a friend who took a picture of me pretending to eat a houseplant. 
the very excuse Hermann Goering used at the Nuremberg trials. <laughs> Ken Clark struck out at UKIP this week. They are a collection of clowns, said the fat man with the red nose in the ridiculous <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Paul and Ross, have a little look at this. Absolutely. What is it? Oh, yes, it's uh, bees. Yes, bees have been affected by certain insecticides, um, they think, and the bee population yeah. is very important because they pollinate all the flowers and without them we'd all die. And so they're going to sort of uh, be a bit more careful about the stuff they pump into the fields. Tip top. This yeah. is the news, of course, that bees may be saved by a pesticide ban. Which pesticides in particular do we know? Neonicotinoids. Neonicotinoids, absolutely. Yes. Some of them, of these uh, neonicotinoids, mm. are made by the German pharmaceutical company Bayer. Uh, so who opposed the ban? Spiders. We do. <laughs> wasps. Wasps and bees really hate each bees, other because they're yeah. very similar. Wasps are a lot thinner, though, aren't they're they? They're thinner than they, they hate that because they see bees as being full of the fat of the land. Yes. <laughs> bees are sort of fern Britain and... Wasps are sort of... Lorraine Chase. Lorraine Chase, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then Fern Britain, she lost all the weird, didn't she? Now she's a wasp. So she's a wasp, she's gone bee to wasp. I yeah. think she went I'm on a the bee, bee I'm definitely... Yeah, she might go back to being a bee. Yeah. yeah. Oprah's bee wasp, bee wasp, bee wasp, isn't that's she? A, that's, a, that's how the DNA's written out, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bee. <laughs> Ian, bee or wasp? Wasp all the way. <laughs> are you? Yeah, I love I picnics. I a wasp. <laughs> Be or not a bee, yeah. that is the question. <laughs> Shut you. <laughs> you, can't be, you can't blame them for that. That's true. <laughs> that only being honest. Ian, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah. When you said that we are opposing the ban. Well, we're not us, our minister. Not us five. Owen Patterson. Oh. He voted against. Because um, okay. he's not convinced by the evidence. Um. He said we need to do more tests. And the other people said, well, if it is the pesticides, um, then we'll have some crops. Yeah. Um, but if we wait too long, there won't be any crops left at all, or any bees, and we'll all die. So why not take the slightly less risky option? <laughs> but we've, um, the EU's done it, so they ban these pesticides. So it's, yes. it's very good news. Yes. Uh, some British scientists mm. think uh, that the science just isn't proven. Mm. The laboratory work is one thing, but when you repeat it with real bees, in real colonies, in real fields, you don't see any effect. Although, to be fair, that was uh, Dr Julian Little from Bayer UK's <laughs> bee-killing unit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and who's opposing him? Bees. Bees. Is it, uh, <laughs> all of them. The British Beekeepers Association. Yes. Or Winnie the Pooh. Yes. <laughs> Is it Win Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Monster. <laughs> yeah. And they've got together. Oh, oh, got to do something about this. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, the, honey the Honey Monster was Winnie the Pooh's dealer. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. With all the fresh honey. Yeah. How do you like it? Runny? Yeah. <laughs> it's Dr Geraldine Wright from Newcastle University's bee department. <laughs> and yes. uh, she oh, said... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, do you know... Oh, you know when that? I was a kid, we were always down the bee department. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was like a rubbish zoo. Mm. <laughs> Can we see the tigers? Yeah, they're very small. <laughs> And they can fly. <laughs> Dad, are these bees? <laughs> Shut up. No, they're not. Geraldine Wright uh, from Newcastle University's bee department says the affected bees don't just curl up and die, their behaviour changes so they forget how to remember things. Wow. Should we have a quick bee quiz? Yes, Who's please. Up for yes. bee quiz? Oh, right, brilliant. Never yeah. ask. Fingers Is it on a spelling buzzers. Bee? <laughs> <laughs> This is all based on a Daily Mail interview with Dave Coulson. Uh, you know Dave. He introduced the short-haired bumblebee to Kent. Of Kent, course this he is did. the short-haired bumblebee. Right. Short-haired bumblebee, <laughs> this is Kent. <laughs> <laughs> so he's over there. I'll introduce you later. <laughs> <laughs> Who does Dave Coulson blame for the bumblebee's 20th century extinction from Britain? Kirk Douglas. No, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler, because the Dig for Victory campaign in World War II oh, caused hedges yeah. to be dug up and wildflowers destroyed for crop planting. Right, Brilliant. fingers yes. on buzzers. Fingers on buzzers. <laughs> <laughs> That's fingers on buzzers. Yeah. Is the Sorry. next question, what noise does a bee make? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Excellent. How does the bee pronounce the name Kirk Douglas? <laughs> <laughs> Why do bumblebees' feet smell? Richard. Richard, Lepp, Richard no Lepp, idea. He no, got idea. no idea. Throw it back Ross. to us. You can't be agnostic about bees. I'm Church of England. Oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> he who would valiant be? Oh. <laughs> Shut your fear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll come soon. over there. <laughs> He'll come over there and tell you another joke <laughs> if you don't behave yourself. Okay. In order to tell other bees that a flower may not have nectar. 
The bumblebee drinks the nectar, pollinates the flower, and its feet leave a smell on the petals. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's absolutely Lovely. true. Lovely. Why is mating hazardous for the male honeybee on buzzers? <laughs> Good. Ross? They shouldn't do it on buzzers. <laughs> <laughs> They should be on a sort of twig or a bit of leaf somewhere. <laughs> well, according to Dave yeah. Coulson, the mid-air coupling with the female concludes with an explosive rupture of the male's genitals, yeah. which sends him plummeting to the ground, where he quickly expires. <laughs> There's no upside to that, is there, really? <laughs> now, what have bee experts discovered in Colombia? A Columbia. massive bee, a huge <laughs> bee. It's actually the world's tiniest wasp. And there it is. <laughs> He's got a big hand for a tiny wasp. <laughs> it's called Tinana. Where is it? it you, it's so tiny you can't see it, Ian. How do they know it's been discovered? Ah. <laughs> it's not just a man with an empty hand saying, here we are, I want to name it after me. Well, in other dying animals news, mm -hmm. uh, what is Brian May's latest attempt to stop oh. a badger car? Um, he's adopted badgers? Nope. He's married one. <laughs> <laughs> He's made a song about it. Do you yes. want to have a, a, have yeah. a look? Yes. yes. Oh, no! And what you can't see is Ben Elton is in the audience going, it's going to make a great musical. <laughs> <laughs> this is the good news for bees mm. in the form of an EU ban on pesticides. According to one top beekeeper, it takes roughly two million nectar droplets to make a pot of honey and roughly two million nectar points to get a free pot off Sainsbury's. <laughs> <laughs> And so to round two, and it's welcome to the Pithivier of news. Here's the first spin. There we go. Right. Uh, this Who's is this? the uh, President of the United States. Indeed. Every year they have the Washington Correspondents Dinner, and in the last few years that the President will make a speech where he's sort of like he's allowed to sort of make funny remarks, make jokes. Gags, yes. And they used to have comedians come on and address them, but when George W. Bush was president, they didn't need a comedian. Uh, <laughs> he opened his library, did you see? Was that, yeah. that was George. this week, didn't he? Mm. George All w. those Bush. colouring books. <laughs> <laughs> I was on tour with the Style Council once, <gasps> and uh, Steve White, the drummer, lovely chap, we were staying in this posh hotel in Scotland, and it was an old castle, and we walked into the library, which was full of books, and Steve White said, Blimey, what a lot of videos. <laughs> <laughs> This is the news yes. that Barack Obama sported a new look to host this year's White House This is his wife's dinner. hairstyle, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Here they are, side by side. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wondered what other famous men would look like with their wife's hair? <laughs> yes, I have. Good. <laughs> John Prescott and Pauline Prescott. Yes. Thanks to The Express, you're in luck. <laughs> there we go. Brilliant. That's, that's really weird, cos Prescott actually looks like my mum. <laughs> Do you want to see another one? We've got... Looks like Planet of the Apes, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, here's David Cameron with Samantha's hair. <laughs> here's Richard and Judy. <laughs> uh, and uh, look, here's Prince Philip and the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like George III. Yes. It's, a, <laughs> it's a brilliant look. It's fantastic. David Furnish has also been seen with Elton John's hair, but that was due to a sudden gust of wind. <laughs> Would you like to see a caterpillar that looks like Donald Trump? <laughs> this is brilliant. It's the larva of the flannel moth, which does look absolutely <laughs> the same as Donald Trump's hair. That is fantastic. I feel it's time for another spin of the Perthivier of News. Absolutely. This is Reginald, who was on last week. Uh, he got booked to appear for the uh, Professional Football Association's annual dinner. Yeah. And um, yeah. they weren't entirely happy with what he did. Yes, totally right. The PFA chairman, Clark Carlyle, uh, was shocked at Hunter's frequent use of the N-word, but admitted the PFA had made the booking and should take responsibility, adding, I'll probably get hung for this. Steady on, this isn't Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and what did the PFA want to do now? They want him to give the money back, don't they? Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. But we'll let's look at it this way. Uh, he's being talked about now, and Reg is on tour at yep. the moment. So uh, 
Win-win. Give the cash back. <laughs> take the publicity. Thanks very much. OK. Bosh. <laughs> I don't think he's German. <laughs> <laughs> he released a series of photos with his own added captions, and here's one of them. Reginald D. Hunter being chased by an angry anti-racist mob <laughs> to his taxi. <laughs> Next one, Reginald D. Hunter spots John Terry's arrival. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Reginald D. Hunter is asked if he's brought along any bottles of reggae reggae sauce. <laughs> <laughs> this is the PFA Awards dinner and the wholly unsuitable booking of Reginald D. Hunter. During Reg's performance, lots of black footballers were shocked. They hadn't heard the N-word used so much since they last played Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> As Reg left the stage, everyone at the awards wondered who could have possibly made such a terrible selection, and all the fingers pointed to Roy Hodgson. <laughs> <laughs> and a final spin. This is a better search engine than Google's. <laughs> at least it finds tags. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> but, I mean, Google made something like... I think is £18 billion in the UK and paid £16 million pounds tax. £16 million. 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 So that's a tax rate Tiny. of about a thousandth. Yeah. yeah. Their executives appeared before the Parliamentary Accounts Committee um, and they said, why haven't you paid any tax? And they said, oh, all our business, it's all in Ireland. We don't have to pay any. Um, and then um, it turned out that this isn't technically what we call true. And Google's motto is, don't do evil. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's got to be pay some tax, you bastards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Render unto Caesar those things that are Caesar's, apart from the stuff you've stashed away <laughs> on the Cayman Islands. <laughs> 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 Last time Google were in Parliament, they said they sell no advertising space in the UK, claiming it all goes through their Dublin office, as you said. But Reuters looked at the CVs of 150 London-based Google employees, all of whom said they were involved in formulating sales strategy, managing sales teams, closing deals or other sales work. Mind you, everyone says that, don't mm. they? Whatever they do. <laughs> yes. You find that on every CV you ever see. We advertise for a new grave digger and we got all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully grave compliant. Yes. Yeah. We'll only work indoors. <laughs> Anyone know why members of Parkham Women's Institute should learn to Google a little bit more carefully? Oh, have they got very fat fingers? <laughs> they can't type. They had a special visitor. From Google? No. They were given a talk on piracy by Captain Colin Darch, uh, who you'll remember had a very frightening, dramatic experience when he was captured by oh, Somali yeah. pirates in 2008. Mm. Something members of Parkham Women's Institute clearly didn't Google as they chose <laughs> to dress like this. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. The sample of pitch used in the pitch drop experiment, the world's biggest jigsaw, the Pontfadog oak and Icarus. Well, I think this is to do with falling to the ground. Yes, it is, isn't it? Icarus fell to the ground. The Pontfadog oak, for want of a few thousand quid after 800 years, fell to the ground. Fell to the ground. I think this jigsaw, he was trying to put a piece in and it just fell down. The whole jigsaw. Oh, and the and the pitch thing. There's an experiment that's been going on for some ridiculous like is it 80 years waiting for a. And drop? it hasn't it's fallen down at all. Yeah. So the, the odd one out is the pitch. You're absolutely uh, right. Yep, they've all fallen down apart from the ninth drop of pitch in the pitch drop experiment. Though it may fall at any moment. Apparently. On a positive note, the oak has been declared fit for work by Atos, so we're hoping to see it. <laughs> <laughs> As has Icarus. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go to the live feed? Yes, please. Here's the live webcam. This is it, real time. It's a bit dull, isn't it? Yeah. So how long's this been? When was this started? 1927. 27. And it's been on the internet all that time. <laughs> <laughs> it drops very slowly and there's about to be another drop. Exactly. Anyone know any reasons why the scientists have missed the drops? The... It happened at night when nobody was there, watching it. Did they happen during the war when there was something else to do? John Mainston told Radio 4's Today programme that in 2000 he was out of town when he received an email to say, it's dropped! John replied to say, don't worry, I'll be back next week and we'll drag the footage out of the digital memory. The reply came back, oh, no, you won't, the camera's failed. <laughs> <laughs> and in 1988, when another drop fell, he missed it again because he uh, popped out for a coffee. <laughs> John is not going to make that mistake again, though. Look at him. Mm. Look at him here. 
Icarus famously fell from the sky after mm. his wings melted. Yeah. Icarus, of course, ignored instructions not to get too close to the sun mm. and joined the Metropolitan Police Force. <laughs> 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 and you mentioned the world's biggest handmade jigsaw. Yes, mm. a record-breaking jigsaw commemorating the Queen's Jubilee was completed this week. It was hand-cut by 63-year-old uh, Dave Evans from Weymouth, who spent 200 hours cutting the jigsaw before putting it together. And here it is on display. Absolute disaster. <laughs> <laughs> But what a great bit of commentary. Who knew that you could have a jigsaw commentator? <laughs> what an absolute disaster. <laughs> oh, that is going to be one of the worst results in competitive jigsawing. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round. Uh, this week's guest publication is Sick Insight. This is the magazine <laughs> of Sick, a German electrical engineering company. The company was founded by Erwin Sick, who died in 1988, and I'd like to think, in tribute to Spike Milligan, his headstone reads, I told you I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with... Git Award what? Is this like a country music thing? Get award and then go to the after party. <laughs> <laughs> Get awarded compensation if you've been injured at work. <laughs> the answer is Get award goes to the S300 Mini. <laughs> this is from Sick Insight. According to winning product manager Torsten Rapp, we celebrated a bit, not too extensively, however, as we're already working on the next innovation. <laughs> and that's how you win a Git award. <laughs> Typical British laughing at successful German company. <laughs> oh, God, I bet they sell all that stuff and create jobs. <laughs> and finally, 99p shower gel what? Offered by Amazon in settlement of its 2012 corporation tax <laughs> <laughs> This is burnt my willy. Absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Not me, yeah, but... <laughs> Ross, you're absolutely right. The answer was, burned my privates. This is Raymond Cuss, whose genitals were burned when he used a shower gel bought at his local 99p store. After being awarded £1,000 compensation by the shop, Raymond said, I don't know what I'll do with £1,000, but I certainly won't be spending it on shower gel in 99p stores. So, the final scores tonight are Richard and Ian with five points, Ross and Paul with nine. 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 <laughs> and I leave you with news that, at a function in Buckingham Palace, Prince Philip prepares to meet the visiting delegation from the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> in Rome, a new victim experiences the after-effects of the Vatican canteen's vegetable curry. <laughs> After the prolonged period of cold weather, there's evidence that the delayed spring sunshine may finally have reached as far as Newcastle. <laughs> Good night. And you can hear more of Mel on Radio 4 Extra every weekday on The Four O'Clock Show. Networking is a dirty business comedy with Lee Mack & Co. Not going out, coming up next on BBC One. <laughs>